I've come again like Egypt so that I can open the locks of the prison from the crutches and fangs of carnivals. Those imprisoned in the crown will tear the earth apart. The seeds that were previously trapped in the crown are slowly starting to reveal themselves and turn green. It generally means the feast of breaking the fast. However, actually etymologically, it means to return to. And fitter means holiness, purity, or natural disposition. Let's talk about it briefly in a Sufi perspective. The word fitter, which means natural disposition or in its character, indicates our pure nature when we were babies. Each baby is born in the world in a pure state and with no earthly stains. In such a state, the baby is called fitri. As the Prophet Muhammad said, no one is born except according to a state of fitro, in its character or origination. To return to fitr, at least from a worldly perspective, is to return to our purity and holiness as a baby. Ital fitr brings us into the baby of meanings, tiflul ma'ani, in which we return to our pure state. In addition, the word fitr, which derives from the word fatoro, also has the meaning to create or bring into being or bring forth, as used in the Quran. Truly, as a hanif, I have turned my face toward him who created the heavens and the earth, and I'm not of the idolaters. In this respect, fitr is understood to refer to the beginning of creation. Then, commonly, the Sufis refer to the alamul fitr to the primordial realm or the day of Allah's too, namely the transhistorical fact of the primordial governance as understood from one of the Quranic verses. And when thy Lord took from the children of Adam, from their loins, their progeny and made them bear witness concerning themselves, am I not your Lord? Allah's too, Birobikum, they said, yea, we bear witness, bala shahidna. So in this regard, the Sufis comprehend that the shahada, Islamic testimony, that there is no God but God refers to the day of Allah's two or the primordial covenant. However, humankind then forget that they have previously witnessed God because of their fall in the world and being preoccupied with worldly affairs. Thus, humans no longer witness God in the true sense. Simmel writes, the idea of this primordial covenant between God and humanity has impressed the religious conscience of the Muslims and especially the Muslim mystics more than any other idea. Here is the starting point of the understanding of free will and predestination of election and acceptance of God's eternal power and man's loving response and promise. The call cool of the mystic is to return to the experience of the day of Allah's too, when only God existed, before he let future creatures out of the abyss of non-being and endowed them with life, love, and understanding so that they might face him again at the end of time. This is where the meaning of ma'rifah, the mystical knowledge, is not to know something that has not previously been recognized, but to recognize recognize something that has previously been known. For the Sufis Ma'rifah is to know what has already been known, namely on the day of Allah's too. Then, how to know what has already been known? The Sufis answer that one must perform self-purification or the purification of the soul. In this context, the purification of the soul is performed in the month of fasting, Ramadan. For the Sufis, fasting in Ramadan is a journey, a written journey by way of self-purification, a short journey that brings one to return to the fifth day, idul fitr. For one month, Muslims are forged to do the alchemy of hunger or the alchemy of refraining for Sufis from anything other than God. We can say that fasting in Ramadan is the journey of purification to be ready to enter the primordial covenant where we answer, yea, we bear witness, when asked, am I not your Lord? Therefore, for the Sufis, Ramadan is the month when spiritual dishes are being served. These dishes, in Rumi's terms, are in the form of slaughtering the false eye or the false self to be replaced by the real eye or the essential self. The authentic eye definitely belongs only to God. In the world, we only borrow the eye, even worse, manipulated for the sake of vested interest. 
Hence, for the Sufis, our essence is to live our Ainness in such a way one can obliterate duality and separation. Quote, our enemy is ourselves and let the beloved kill us. We drown in the ocean and we will be killed by the waves. Eid al-Fitr is the moment when the mercies of God are bestowed to spiritual wayfarers to arrive at the poverty of their existence. In one of his poems, Rumi depicts Ramadan as Mary and Eid as Jesus. Don't despair my soul for hope has manifested itself. The hope of every soul has arrived from the unseen. Don't despair, though Mary has gone from your hands for that light which through Jesus to heaven has come. Don't despair my soul in the darkness of this prison for that King who redeemed Joseph from prison has come. Jacob has come forth from the veil of occlusion. Joseph who rents Zulaikha's veil has come. You who all through night to tone have been crying, O oh Lord, mercy has heard that O oh Lord and has come. A pain which has grown old, rejoice for the cure has come. O oh fastened lock, open for the key has come. You who have abstained fasting from the table on high, Break your fast with joy, for the first day of the feast has come. Keep silence, keep silence, for by virtue of the command P, that silence of bewilderment has augmented beyond all speech. Be silent, there is noise in the silence. Listen, dearly beloved, there is takbir within. Sing, there is a party within. Celebrate, there is his primordial trace. Feel, dearly beloved, be silent.